This episode's really weird. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 15th episode of the show Power Rangers Zeo, as well as the 170th episode overall, titled There's No Business Like Snow Business Part 1. We start this episode off with stock footage of snowboarders doing wild and crazy stunts. Turns out it's a commercial for her champion snowboarder, Heather Thompson. She invites people to come and join her on The Widowmaker. Ernie then talks about how he's not going to do that because... I mean, do we really need to explain it? Tommy's working out with Adam and Rocky and we see a letter getting passed around. It's a letter for Tommy from... Kimberly. He gives the letter to Adam to read aloud. Adam starts to read it aloud and essentially, Kimberly says that she's found someone else. Awkward. She feels terrible because she's breaking up with him via Dear John letter. Wait, were they even together anymore? Tommy says he has to go and Kat looks on. Take that, Tommy. Machina and Mondo see this and they decide that since he's heartbroken, they're going to use RoboCupid to make someone fall in love with the first things that they see so they can be eternally heartbroken. It's time for a montage of Tommy walking on the beach of a lake thinking about Kimberly while a somber song about missing someone plays in the background. It's actually kind of nice because we see things like them kissing in season one and whatnot. Jason David Frank actually really sells this emotion, which is good because he needs to. Kat shows up and she wants to make sure that Tommy's doing okay and he says that basically, Kim has never mentioned anything before in any of her letters. Like she was just gonna mention, by the way, I've been screwing this other dude. And Kat wishes that she could do something to help and he promises to call if he needs them. Kat then meets up with Billy telling him how Tommy is in a really bad shape. Billy says he has an idea to cheer him up. Slow fade to a snowy mountain. Tommy, Kat, and Billy are there and Kat says that she's going to go get a hot chocolate and Billy and Tommy are going to go snowboarding. This is a nice little escape for Tommy for the weekend to help get his mind off of Kimberly. The two board on down a slope in a very nice shot montage, but at the end of the day, this isn't exactly the stuff I came here for, Power Rangers, but I will say I appreciate the effort. Except that it just lasts for like a few minutes, like probably close to three out of like a 20 minute episode, we get it. In space, Mondo tells Clank that there needs to be a test object for RoboCupid, and Sprocket wants to be the one to fall in love with something, I guess. I'm confused by the point of this scene. Clank and RoboCupid are together, and they plan to make all the humans in Angel Grove fall in love with machines. Turns out most of the moms of Angel Grove are already in love with some kind of machine. She immediately sees herself in the mirror, hitting herself with a beam, and she falls in love with Clank to a Benny Hill montage. She has a heart on her face now. Orbis fires at her, turning her back into normal. Hulk and Skull are fixing parts of their bike on the side of the road and RoboCupid comes sneaking up behind them. Skull says it's ready to go and he revs up the motorcycle only for it to not work at all. They say that they're ready to scrap it, but then RoboCupid hits them and they're now in love with the motorcycle. They start to fight over who gets to stick their dick in the exhaust pipe first. Rocky, Adam, and Tanya are at the youth center and they find Ernie making out with a blender. They're really confused and probably should be a lot more worried than they actually are. And then they see that Stone is in love with an arcade machine and honestly, everyone is in love with machines all over the place. Someone's definitely gonna hurt themselves doing something during this. Mono suggested that he needs to make sure that Tommy, Billy, and Kat can't help the others, so they need to keep everyone at half power. On camera, a news reporter, who is definitely the writer of this episode, Doug Sloan slash Uncle Steve to Kimberly from like the first season and also Kim's new stepdad, is talking about how there's a foreign team showing up and it's the Cogs. They get in a pod heading for the top of the mountain. Cat follows after them and they start playing music like it's a really cool fight scene and it's kind of hilarious because nothing's happening. The Cogs start snowboarding down the slope and Cat is following them in skis, coming after them. Again, this is really not the content I came here for. Billy and Tommy are in the lobby and Tommy's walking backwards and he walks right into Heather Thompson. Billy and Tommy introduce themselves to her and they say that they've done every slope already and then she challenges them to go up on the Widowmaker. This is bad because she's like a professional and they're allegedly 18. Kat is following the cogs and they're already going down the Widowmaker and she's struggling to keep up with them. And really, this is the most boring chase scene I've ever seen. Seriously, I wish there was more to say about what's going on in this episode, but there's literally nothing to talk about except that people are going downhill with the same damn song that's just playing in the background over and over again. Finally, Kat gets to the stopping point and she sees that the cogs are removing the out of bound markers. And she's worried that someone's gonna actually get hurt. Tommy and Billy are at the top of the Widowmaker and they follow Heather down, obviously intimidated by this. Why are they doing this? Why is she pressuring them to do this? Kat then says, screw it, it's Morphin time. She fights against the cogs a bit before we see Billy, Tommy, and Heather on their way, and then she gets held back to see if the cogs are walking away at the markers. Kat gets free and she tosses a cog face down into the snow. We keep cutting back to the other three and honestly, it's way less interesting than Kat's fight. And that's even a hard sell because Kat isn't really doing that much either. Kat has defeated the cogs and she sees that the warning signs are all gone. She tells Tommy and Billy to stop, which they do, but then Heather just keeps going right over the edge, falling to her death. 
Tommy, Billy, and Kat run to the edge to look for her scattered remains, but they see nothing. To be continued. Okay, this was genuinely one of the most boring episodes of Power Rangers I've ever had to watch. Everything that needed to happen, happened in like the first seven minutes of this episode maybe. After that, it's like watching a season two episode because it's so clear to me that this was a multi-parter that was originally meant to be maybe two parts and for whatever reason, it was stretched out to three. I actually don't know why because it's not like they were like hurting for Japanese footage to use or anything. So I'm confused as to why the majority of this episode is like all American footage. In fact, I think the only thing that isn't American footage is the villain stuff. I think I'm supposed to feel a certain way about Tommy and Kim breaking up, but honestly, I don't care because I assume that they broke up when she moved away anyways, if they were even together to begin with. I get that Tommy is bummed if he thought that they were doing like a long distance thing, but I don't think they were. I think he was just banking on Kim always being into him and this was really weird for him. I know why they're doing what they are because of what they're trying to set up, and we'll talk more about that at the end of this three-parter, but man, there had to be a way less awkward way to go about it. So will next time get any better? I mean, my God, please. Until then, may the power protect you. Mm -hmm.